reflection problem, all right? And out of these two problems, we need to, again, determine what the parent graph is. So first of all, let's look at y equals a times log base b of x minus h plus k. So by looking at my transformations and understanding what h and k are, I know that this graph is going to shift one unit to the right and four units up. Yes? All right. The next thing is let's go to the parent graph of a logarithm. This is, again, the first thing that we graphed. When looking at the parent graph of logarithm, we know that crosses at the um, x-intercept at 1, 0. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, and it's OK. You guys don't need to sit in there next time. Um, now, the next thing we need to do is now apply our transformations. Now, we don't have any reflections, so we don't have to go through that mistake that I made last class. But we can just now just shift this graph. So the graph tells you you're going to shift one unit to the right and four units up. So right now, what I like to do, again, if you, are, you already have one point. All right? And one point is going to be fine. But if we wanted to get um, a little bit more, we could determine another point by using an x and y table. So you could say 1, we know is already 0, um, just by using my parent graph, which is log base 5 of, of x minus 1. But that's going to have your transformation of x of x. So without your transformations, you can take your parent graph and just say y equals log base 5 of x. What's the problem? OK, well, there's something wrong if you're even getting blamed for anything. Because really, all you need to be doing is just writing down what we're doing, right? Yeah, OK, cool. So if I just take my parent graph without the transformations, and I just say, all right, well, how can I determine then what are some different values, right? So if I have 5 base x and y, one thing I can determine is, well, what if I want my um, 5 to be, obviously, 25? So I'm rewriting this to exponential form. I could say 5 raised to the y equals 25. Well, we know the y is going to be 2. Now, obviously, I don't want to graph all the way to 25, but you can see that this graph, that would be another point, which is uh, 25 comma 2. Do you guys see that? OK. So you can plug in any at least two points um, would be helpful when graphing your, quad, your logarithmic. So now, ladies and gentlemen, all we need to do is just transform by using our operations, or transform. So we need to take this one unit right. Well, let's take the point 1, 0 and shift it up one unit to up. And then let's take it four units to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not going to make a graph big enough right now um, to do 29. 3 to plot that point, but you guys should at least know that 29, 3 would be the next point um, that we have with integers. Yes? If you're moving one unit right, wouldn't it be on the axis? Yeah, so you move it. So originally it was here, so I moved it. No, 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 I'm moving it one unit up. One unit up, four units to the right. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? Seriously. Oh my god. All right. That is telling you to do one unit to the right. So instead of at 1, 0, now you're at 1, 2, 0, and then four units up. 1, 2, 3, 4. Wow. Today's been like a bad day. All right. Yes? Um, I wanted to find another point that, would, that it could be on the graph. OK. So what I did was I just chose a point that I could raise 5 to to be y. So that's why I well, so that's why I said, well, what if I put x is 25? Then I know that y could be 2. So I just wanted another coordinate point to verify my graph. All right? But obviously, with this graph, so when our last example, when it was 3, 9, that wasn't that bad. 25, 2, I'm not going to plot both points um, on this graph. But it's just something for you guys to be aware of to make sure that your graph is on there. So now I have this point. Now there's a couple things I want you guys to be aware of. Remember, on our parent graph, we have an asymptote, right? There's a nice asymptote. Well, what happens when my graph is shifted one unit to the right? I have an asymptote. So we need to make sure I have my new asymptote that I write in the new asymptote. Okay, Draw in that new asymptote. So therefore, now I can write my graph. It's going to 
going to look something like that. All right? So now we can say, well, the domain is from the asymptote to infinity. So the domain is now going to be from 1 to infinity. The range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity because the asymptote, asymptote is at x equals 1. All right, we're not done yet. So now the next thing is it says find the x-intercept. Find the x-intercept. Well, remember what we talked about determining the x-intercept. To find an x-intercept, we know that the y has to equal to 0. So we say 0 equals log base 5 of x minus 1 plus 4. So how do you solve problems like this? Well, let's get the logarithm all by itself. Subtract 4, subtract 4. Negative 4 equals log base 5 of x minus 1. Right? Now, let's rewrite that in exponential form, right? We've been practicing exponential form. So rewriting this in exponential form is 5 to the negative fourth equals log, I'm sorry, equals x minus 1. Now, what is 5 to the negative fourth? We talked about this a lot last class period. 5 to the negative fourth is equal to 1 over 5 to the fourth. Yes, remember negative exponents? Now they go down in the denominator. So therefore, this is 1 over 625 equals x minus 1. We still need to solve for x. So you add 1 on both sides. How do you do 1 over 625 plus 1? How do you add a fraction to a whole number? You convert the whole number to a fraction with like denominator. Yeah, terms, denominators. So I change the 1 to 625 over 625. Therefore, my final answer is x equals 626 over 625. So that's the x-intercept, and that's your graph with your new asymptotes. OK? Guys, I'm not uh, done yet. I just want to go over real quick these compound interests. I'm not going to.